Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good Say hello to everybody. What? Say hello to everybody. Good morning, girls. Hi. Okay, well, the first step here is to take the pain pills. I should be taking them every four to six hours. It's been five hours. And then I've got a whole bunch of other things I've got to take. So that's going to be the first order of business here. So I've got five pills I'm taking. I'm also supposed to be taking a laxative here, but uh, I don't know how it gets measured out. So I'll just have Marissa do it, I guess. Um, it's been eight or nine days since I've gone to the bathroom. That's uh, uh, due to the medicine. Uh, the medicine uh, constipates you, and so now it's starting to get to be a concern that I've not gone to the bathroom. Uh, side effects of all this medicine are itchiness, which uh, at night I can take uh, Benadryl to combat, but during the day that's going to make me go to sleep. Um, weakness. Uh, but of course, uh, having the operation is also going to make me weak, tired, the same thing. Um, hard to concentrate. Uh, it's hard for my eyes to focus. Um, they say they they get a little pin pot, uh, you know, pinpointy, which I think they are just a little bit. Um, so I find it hard to read on the iPad. So I haven't been able to go on. Uh, I mean, I still go on Facebook and read message forms, but it's a struggle and. Uh, I find it hard to pay attention to movies for long periods of time. So, uh, there's other things I do. And the next thing I'm going to do is get my ice going since I've not iced since I went to bed. So that is important to get the swelling down on my leg. I'm also logging down what I took my Dilaudid, which is the uh, you know high strength stuff here. So that way I know exactly when I've taken it in case we have questions. Alright, so I'm filling up the ice machine. Uh, Marissa freezes Tupperware container full of ice and then we put it inside the machine and uh, by the way I'm still using my walker to get around I can't uh, walk on my own yet um, a lot of things I can't do by the way uh, this is six days after surgery by the way just so you know so filling up the ice then I'll hobble over to the uh, couch and sit down and so now I'm attaching my uh, alien face hugger here uh. This thing is the second greatest thing I can do. First thing uh, is to crack my knee, which Marissa does for me and sometimes I can do. I sit and I kind of shake my knee and you can feel the, the new joint crack, which feels good because uh, it locks up. We'll get more into that in a second. All right, so the knee is being iced right now. The walker right there for when I need it. The dog staring loving it, lovingly at me because they didn't see me all night. And then I've got my cane somewhere around here. Yeah. And that's so I can get up the sunken living room because that's a challenge. Sorry everybody for the unflattering angle, but this is the only way I can really hold the iPad and use my hands, which apparently I'm famous for. Hi, hello. So where's Marissa you may be asking right now? Well, she's taking care of the farm stuff. Farm stuff doesn't end just because I get uh, my uh, knee hacked up and so she's bringing in the horses right now and she's feeding them and then we'll have breakfast and at 9.30 we have physical therapy so we'll have to leave here a little before 9 to go to physical therapy where the real pain will begin but I always feel better after physical therapy. Um, I, last video it was all sunshine and roses well let me tell you it uh, went downhill quickly. Um, so Thursday afternoon I got home from the hospital everything was fine I was walking around with the walker uh, just fine I was able to do my exercises uh, just fine I was in just some mild discomfort you know not a big deal so I said you know I think I am able to go upstairs to the bedroom and I walked upstairs and it wasn't a problem and I propped up my leg and uh, Ella slept on the bed with us and she was protective of her daddy dog and uh, you know everything was was great and then like two, three in the morning, it felt like someone was stabbing me with a crochet needle repeatedly in the knee. So what had happened was 
the medicine ran out and I did not set an alarm to take the medicine. I just, and I should have known better. This happened to me in the past with uh, other surgeries. So I should have known better. So luckily Marissa was smart enough to leave a Dalauded. Um, so that's a pain reliever. Um, a very potent one, by the way, and very addictive. And so uh, I am worried about that. Took the pill half hour later. Oh, much better. So I went from an eight, I was basically in tears, um, to a three or four. So normal, was able to fall asleep. Got up in the morning, leg was a little stiff. Couldn't put uh, much weight on it. Okay, so I walked down the stairs, use both hands, you know, and you put the bad leg down first, and then you put the good leg, bad leg, good leg. And I walked down the stairs, and we have a landing, so I turned the landing, and I just stood there, and Marissa went to go get my walker or something, I don't know. <clears throat> and then I yelled to her, uh, Marissa, um, I'm going to pass out. And so she came running, and I don't remember the rest because I passed out. I woke up on the ground. She had gotten me and slowly slid me down. So I didn't bend my leg or anything. She was able to, you know, guide me to the ground. Um, but, you know, I woke up on the ground and uh, then I started dry heaving um, and threw up and got the sweats and the chills. Uh, you know, my whole body reacted and that was all due to the amount of pain I was in. The pain pill I took at 3 a.m. had already worn off and I did not take a tramadol. Normally I take two pain pills, uh, two different types of pain pills uh, at every four to six hours and I had not. So uh, that was what happened. So uh, big setback. Uh, we agree that I should sleep on the ground floor um, by myself, that I should set an alarm uh, to wake me up in the middle of the night to take a pain pill even if I don't need it. Uh, P.S. the last two nights I have had to take that pain pill. Uh, I woke up an hour before and then just sat out the hour because I don't want to take it too early. Don't want to become addicted to them. Uh, they're on a schedule. Um, so I am keeping to that schedule. Um, but that next day, so after the, the fall incident, um, was a physical therapy day. <clears throat> Talked to the physical therapist. She said everything I was experiencing was normal. I had lost strength. I had lost the ability to bear weight on the leg, which I had no problems with in the hospital. And, um, the thinking we all have is that the nerve blocks finally wore off, even though they shut it off at the hospital and it was four hours for them to basically get an idea of where I was. They weren't all out of my system. It took 12 hours to get them out of my system. So, um, I am unable to, so if I'm laying down, I cannot lift my leg, uh, at all. It's completely dead. If I need to get in and out of the bed, the leg is dead. I have to physically move it or Marissa has to physically move it. Um, so a lot of the exercises that I have to do um, are modified now. Uh, during physical therapy, I made Marissa stay with me during physical, physical therapy and talk to the physical therapist all the time. And I asked every time the physical therapist was manipulating my leg because she was moving stuff around, you know, on, on her own. Um, and I said, can Marissa do this? Yes, this is what you do. And you go, okay, can Marissa do this? Yes, that's fine. You won't break it. Yes, do this. And how many should you do? And... Um, one of the exercises I have to tighten up the quad muscle and push down and I can't feel that if I'm doing it or not. So I said, am I doing it? She, oh, you're doing it. I'm like, Marissa, come here and look, you know, am I doing it? The physical therapist would put her hand where the muscle is that I'm tightening and said, do you feel that? Yes. Okay. Well then that's, she's doing it. Um, physical therapist is not concerned with the 90 degree bend, which you think a lot of people would be. She said that kind of sorts itself out on its own. It's actually straight. So right now, I am not straight no matter what. And I physically push down with my hands lots of times. I also uh, flex my um, ankles quite a bit. And all of that is an effort to get that down. If I don't get that down in these first few weeks, I will have a permanent limp for the rest of my life. It's important to have the leg completely straight. Um, to avoid that limp. Walking upstairs, walking around, you'll get that bend naturally. And I've been working on that too. So I'll stand in front of a, a, a flight of stairs, put my foot up and then bend into it, and, you know, 
I can get to about 90 degrees right now without uh, killing anyone. I mean, it hurts. The whole thing hurts. This whole process hurts. Um, daily, not doing anything hurts. Um, you know, besides them pulling the muscles apart and ripping out all that stuff and shaving down the bone and putting it in and back. Um, some say they, they actually cut parts of the muscle to loosen them so that the muscles are kind of cut and that they reattach different things and there's sutures inside and staples and a whole bunch of stuff going on. On this one online forum that I've, I've read to make sure am I going through things that are normal, um, they are more conservative. They're based in the UK and everything that they suggest is contradictory to what we say here, especially with the physical therapist. They say don't do anything for, for weeks and um, my doctors and physical therapists have said that's the worst thing you can do. But over there, that's what they believe in, I guess. And I don't know. So it's been hard to read support forms that are contradictory to what you're having. But um, several people in there have said that uh, total knee replacement is worse than childbirth and pain. These were women that said that, but I don't know if that's true or not. You know, there's no way to really quantify that. But... Uh, everyone does agree that this is a brutal surgery and there is a lot of pain involved, a lot of pain. And, uh, and certainly this has been the most pain I've ever been in my life, um, the post-op. And that is exactly what the doctor had said, <clears throat> that uh, for the first two weeks are going to be horrific. And they are. They are horrific and it hurts all the time. And the medicine just, if I don't take it, it is, I mean... I'm incapable of anything, um, crying, you know, pain. That's we're at eight or nine with that, with the medicine, anywhere between two or three and a six. So, about the level of pain I was at before, um, you know. But it's difficult to, I consciously have to bear weight on my leg and straighten it out, and I physically grab it and bend it and stretch it and you know, push down on it, and you know, it's. It's difficult to do this physical therapy work, but that's uh, these first two to four weeks are critical for me to go back to a normal life, and that is the goal. So I am still in high spirits. Um, some of the medicine uh, can make you depressed, and you know, it, it, just having parts of you removed make you depressed. Um, and that's just a fact. Um, but I'm not depressed. I am sleepy um, a lot of the time. I don't sleep well. I don't plan on sleeping well. Um, that's just part of this. That you know, you will you know, sleep two hours at a time and then wake up with either pain or side effects, uh, which is what's happened. Um, I doze when I doze, uh, when I'm sitting here in the chair and I get up at least 15, 20 times uh, during the day. And we make it a point of making me walk and I walk on the walker and I'll sit there and consciously make sure I'm not limping on the walker. That's not the same thing as walking. So I make sure I put the weight down on the leg and that I actually walk you know, so that is what's going on with me. I don't know if I can really bring you in for physical therapy, um, you know, with HIPAA laws and stuff like that. Plus, um, I'm concentrating, to be honest with you. But, you know, maybe I'll, I'll try uh, one time. That's what's going on with me from Chris Dixieland Farm. Thank you so much for watching this uh, video diary of my progress. And uh, so this is going to be the lowest, hardest point. But uh, I'm doing well. So, everybody, thank you so much for your kind words and well wishes and all the comments. I really appreciated it. Um, a little slow for me to go to the computer room to sit down and type because uh, it hurts my leg. But I do it. Uh, and I re always respond to every comment. I always have. Um, that's, to me, it's rude not to respond to a comment. You took the time to leave it. I can take the time to respond to it, even if it's just thank you. Everybody, take care.